Hey guys, today I'm going to be going over my house hacking presentation. This will be up on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, thanks for tuning in. If you're watching this on Facebook, also thank you. If you have any questions about this, please reach out to me at a later date. So here on the screen, we can see this is all about house hacking, how to do it in any market and for any comfort level. We'll talk about what house hacking is and how you can do it yourself. So house hacking essentially is buying a home and renting out the spaces that you don't need. That's exactly what I'm doing here in my duplex in East Austin. We have a unit next door. We rent that unit out. It's currently being rehabbed, but it will be rented out here soon. This unit we're in here is a three bedroom unit. We are living in this by ourselves, but this is my office. Of the room next door is my girlfriend Jessica's office, and then we have a bedroom in here. So this could be extra bedrooms. It could be other units. So like in a duplex to fourplex situation, it could be accessory dwelling units or ADUs. Maybe you have a single family house with a unit in the back and you rent out that unit. It's a guest house. A lot of times they're either above garages or they used to be garages. They're converted from garages to living units. Or it could be any other type of guest suite. It could be a mother-in-law suite. I sold a home recently that had a mother-in-law suite with a separate entrance. Great ADU. They actually used it for Airbnb in that case and paid the entire mortgage off of that Airbnb. So again, you can do this with anything. You can do it with duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, condos, single family by renting out the rooms or townhomes. So it works with anything. You know, anything you can do to help reduce your payment of the mortgage, it works with. And essentially any type of residential real estate, commercial real estate does not work well because of loan restrictions and higher down payments. So a lot of lenders will not allow you to buy an apartment building and live in one of the units. They will allow you to buy an apartment building, but they're gonna allow you, require you to put down at least 20% in most cases and there's not a lot of benefits to doing that rather than just buying it for rental purposes. Most residential loans will allow you to do this for three to 5% down. When you're putting down three to 5% or under 20%, the lender is going to require that you pay PMI, which is private mortgage insurance. That's to cover you putting down such a low down payment. Most people hear this and get turned off the way I look at it, I don't care about PMI if I'm not the one paying it. So with a house hack, with most residential mortgages, you need to live there at least a year. While you're living there, you're going to be paying part of the mortgage payment. But if you've analyzed this property correctly and run your numbers correctly, you're not going to be paying it when you move out. So I just make sure the numbers work. I don't worry about what money's going where so much. Of course, that does matter because if it's going towards just the principal and interest, after a while, it starts to pay down more of the principal than the interest. But, you know, PMI is, is what it is. And if you're going to put down a low down payment, you're going to pay it. On conventional loans, eventually it goes away. On FHA loans right now, it does not ever go away. So just understand that before you get into it. Where can you house hack? You can house hack in any market, any time that I've ever paid attention. Everybody says, oh, my market's too expensive to house hack. I can't do it here. Maybe I'll move to middle of Kansas and buy a great house hack there. You don't wanna do that. You wanna live where you want to live. And if you don't enjoy living there, it's not worth it. So any market, you're able to do this. You can do this in Brooklyn. I've found a lot of house hacks that make sense in Brooklyn. So. If you're looking to do this in any market, you can do it. You can do it in San Francisco. I know realtors that sell lots of house hacks in San Francisco. You can do it in Austin, Texas here where the market's pretty hot. You can do it anywhere. Just find people that are doing it in your market and make it happen. It's not easy to find a deal. You're not gonna turn on Zillow and say, oh, this'll work, no problem. I looked for 30 minutes and I found a great deal. That's not how it works. Typically, it takes between three and six months, and it takes putting a lot of offers in. In my presentation here, I say two to six, but it can take anywhere from two to nine offers, but I've never seen somebody 
not get somewhere. So be patient, be persistent, know your numbers and push forward. Find people that are doing it, ask them, hey, how did you do this? And you'll figure it out. You need to make an offer based on the numbers. So in a market like Austin right now, that's so hot, we are in January, sorry, February of 2021. It seems like everybody's moving to Austin. You gotta get creative to find a good house hack. Again, all the rent needs to equal or be greater than your mortgage payment when you move out of it because you don't want to pay to own that house. So make sure you're finding stuff that works for you. Again, be patient, be persistent. You'll get it done. Um, and here I say, think about the future. If your goal is to house hack and then move out in the future and have this as a rental property, do the numbers work for this to be a future rental? Most properties will not work for this in nice areas. So make sure you're being creative and make sure you're finding properties that work for this. Just keep plugging along until you do. Most successful house hacks that I've seen and I've done myself need value added to them through rehab. So most of the house hacks I've done were not great when I bought them. I didn't do a lot of the rehab myself, but I paid contractors and other handymen to come in and rehab the places and make them nice. You need to add rentable space or improve the value through management systems too. A lot of people say, hey, the rents this guy is getting are not very good. Yeah, they wouldn't be getting great rents. They wouldn't be selling it if they were getting great rents. So make sure you find something where there's opportunity you're probably gonna to need to improve the property to get the rents up, so factor that in too. Bring a professional with you after you have the house under contract and figure out how much it's gonna to cost to do this rehab. And then during your inspection or option period, you can figure out if this deal's really gonna work for you. You need to do this stuff. You need to figure out these numbers. You don't wanna guess. You wanna find professionals to give you these numbers. Nobody's going to guess, oh, I think I'm going to get this interest rate. I think my insurance is going to cost this much, or I think the rehab is going to cost this much. If you have a ton of experience, this is great. Most people that are looking to house hack don't have a tremendous amount of rental experience. They don't own 50 units. They haven't done this a lot of times. So lean on other people to get this information. You're not going to know the numbers, but you can sure find the numbers. These people want to help you. Most of the times you're paying them, so they're going to help you. Um, again, where you live matters for a house hack. You have to live this in this thing for at least a year. So find somewhere that you're not going to hate. Um, you can't move out under a year or you're committing loan fraud unless there's some extenuating circumstances. So, you know, find somewhere you're going to want to be. Don't buy somewhere you're going to hate. You're not going to do it long term. And, you know, you might not even do it for a year or so. But if you find somewhere that you love living or even like living, you know, maybe you can tolerate it, that that's going to work out a lot better for you. Again, for this, for me, it must have positive cash flow. I don't buy something just to pay for it. If it doesn't make more than a 10% return and the cash flow is at least $100 per door, I personally don't want it. I know that's hard in certain markets right now in 2021. You know, it's hard to find a 10% return, but if you're persistent, you'll find stuff that works. You need to set your own metrics and you need to stick to them. You need to be realistic with these metrics too. So if you're saying, oh, I want a 15% return and I want it in an A plus area, I want it in the best school districts ever, probably not gonna happen. But if you say, hey, I want an eight plus percent return and I'm willing to buy it in the a lower than the normal area that I would live in, probably gonna be able to do it. But again, be accurate in your numbers. Don't make overly conservative estimates just because you're scared. I know people don't like to hear this, but you know, just because you're scared doesn't mean, oh, I'm gonna estimate, I'm gonna spend a thousand dollars a month on repairs just in case. That's not realistic. You're not gonna spend a thousand dollars a month on repairs. If the house is well taken care of and you're going to do an inspection on this house to find out what needs to be fixed, you're not going to spend that much money on it. Be accurate with your estimates. Lean on other people to help. Talk to other investors. Talk to your realtor. Talk to your lender. Talk to your insurance agent. Figure this stuff out before time. Don't, don't go and say, I'm just being conservative. 
with the very limited knowledge that I have that doesn't work. Um, again, you can find out most of these expenses, verify this stuff, do not guess, unless you really know what you're doing and you've done this dozens of times, don't guess on these things. Um, I've seen scared guessing kill more house hacking deals than I can ever count. I've seen so many analyzations where people say, oh, you know, I'm just assuming these expenses are gonna be this high just to be safe. That's not true. You know, you're just making things up to make yourself feel good. Don't do that. Find out, ask other people. You know, ask me if you want. Who can house hack? Anybody can house hack. I've helped all sorts of different people house hack. The, the perception is this is only for younger single people. Again, I said, I'm house hacking here with my girlfriend. She's totally on board. We know why we're doing this and what we're aiming to do in the future. I've helped families house hack. I've helped married couples, quite a few married couples. I've helped people over 40, helped people with kids. Your kids don't care where you live. They just care that you're there and that you're nice to them. They're not gonna really be very upset when they're three years old and they don't have their dream house. They don't care, they just want you around. Um, again, not a father, just what I've seen with lots of families, and I've seen it work out really well for families too. Really, house hacking is for anyone who's willing to sacrifice a little bit of creature comforts for a giant financial gain in the long term. This is not going to be a giant financial gain right away. We'll talk about the benefits right away, but the bigger gain comes long term. It's also for people who want a more flexible lifestyle and are tired of living paycheck to paycheck. So I know a lot of people want to travel and they want to do other things. Maybe they want to start a business. House hacking is the perfect way to do that. If you can reduce your living expenses as low as possible, maybe you're paying a few hundred dollars a month to live in a house that you own. You have a lot of options then. You could do whatever you want. You could go travel abroad for a while. You could start a new business. You could quit your job and look for another job. You don't have any expenses. It's a great way to do all of those things. It's not just for people who want to build rental portfolios, but it's for people who want to take control of their life and have more flexibility. So areas to find potential house hacks. Everybody says, hey, you know, where can I find a house hack? And the reality is almost anywhere. Um, I've sold them in some of the nicer areas of town, you know, great areas that people, everybody wants to live in. I've also sold them in the, the poorer areas of town where people generally would not wanna be. It just depends what are your resources, what can you do, where do you wanna live? Personally, I look for areas that are developing or in the path of progress. I know I have to live there and I, I need to want to live there, but sometimes I stretch my comfort zone a little bit with these things. We live in East Austin here. When we bought this place, even uh, seven months ago, it didn't make any sense to want to live here. It, it didn't look great. There was some new builds. It just wasn't going really in the direction you wanted. But even in a few years, sorry, a few months, it's turned around quite a bit. Um, again, look for areas you wouldn't mind living in but you won't have trouble finding tenants in. All right, one second here, guys. The best loans, again, I'm not a lender. I do not loan money and I don't help people find loans, but the best loans that I've used for house hacking are FHA and conventional loans. These are easy to qualify for, especially the FHA loan. They have long fixed rates and terms and they don't change much over the life of the loan. So the only things that change on these loans are your taxes and your insurance. With certain loans, rehab costs can be rolled in too. So loans like FHA 203K, conventional home style loans, there's loans out there that they will help roll in your rehab cost to fix up this property. Biggest advice ever with this is do not use a lender that's not familiar with what you're trying to do. I've had lenders just completely crush deals. I've had lenders hold up deals for months at a time when you're using a lender that doesn't understand what you're doing. 
The awesome part about these loans is the three to five down percent down payment and there's low closing costs. The rates here in 2021 are just amazing too. The rates are in the mid twos for a lot of owner occupied loans for people with good credit. So great, great, great time to lock in an awesome low interest rate. Again, uh, my buddy Craig Kerlop has what he calls a comfortability scale. There's the most profitable, and then there's the most comfortable. So you got to figure out where do you want to be? Everybody can do this. It's just to figure out where on this scale am I going to be? Most profitable is what I did first. So I bought a duplex. So I rented out the upper unit to a long-term tenant. I rented out rooms in my unit, the lower unit, to roommates and an Airbnb guest. At the same time, the upper unit was in great shape. The lower unit, our unit was in terrible shape. So I had that fixed up over the time that I lived there. I did not have the money to do this. So out of the money I made off the house hack, I rehabbed it. Really stretched on that first one. Um, it needed a lot of rehab. It wasn't the greatest area when I bought it. It turned out to be awesome after that. Um, but I actually made money every month to live there. I got paid $400 a month to live in a duplex that I own in Northeast Minneapolis. So awesome location, got paid to live there, was able to rehab the whole thing when I owned it. It was awesome. Um, you can go on the other end of that scale too. You can do more of a luxury house hack, rehab it before you move in. You don't do anything when you move in, it's, it's ready to go. You know, you can do quartz, stainless steel, nice lighting fixtures, kind of what we have here, but it can still reduce your living expenses significantly. So I tell most people that, you know, a goal for a good house hack could be, you know, going to live under a thousand dollars a month, roughly in the area you want to be in, in a house that you own. So why would you not want to live in a, a luxury place in the area you want to be in for that cheap? It's absolutely possible. That's what we're doing here. We're paying around $700 a month with the other unit rented out to live in this place and it's got nice finishes. Again, earlier we talked about the benefits of house hacking. The immediate benefits, like I said, if you're willing to go real far with it, you can even get paid to live in a house that you own. So that can provide you extreme flexibility. You can go out and do whatever you want. You quit your job, start a business. You could travel abroad, maybe rent out your room while you're gone. Extreme flexibility. Even on the luxury side, you're still gonna save a lot of money compared to buying a similar place or renting a similar place in that area. So again, can provide you a lot of flexibility. But the biggest thing is reduction of living expenses and savings. A dollar saved is worth way more than a dollar earned. You know, even federal tax for most people is around 30%. So you got to think about it to make a dollar, you need to really make about a dollar 30. So think about that when you're saving money. Um, you can also cash flow when you move out, if you run your numbers, right? So you bought something that saved you money while you live there. It's building equity for you. It's appreciating, it's saving a little bit of money on taxes. And then when you move out, it's actually making you extra money. So Again, you know, we talked about loan pay down. It's paying down the loan. And if you're having somebody else there too to help you cover the mortgage, you're not doing all of this. So it's a forced savings account, but somebody else is paying that. And that's great. The, again, not a tax accountant, but you get tax benefits through interest payment deductions. So just by paying your loan, you get to write that off. And homes appreciate over long periods of time. Nobody can guarantee what they're going to do in the short term, but you look at home prices in the 70s and home prices today, they're up a lot. Another benefit, if you're looking to be a rental property investor, house hacking allows you to learn how to do that for a really low down payment. Most people, if they're buying a duplex, are going to have to put 25% down. As a house hacker, you put 3.5% down to do this, and you get to learn all this stuff, and you get a rental property. So... Pretty sweet. Um, this is my first duplex. This is where I rented out the top unit, lived in the bottom unit and had roommates. I bought this for 183,000 in December, 2016. The gross rents were 2,600 when it was fully occupied, but 
but I put $6,405 down to buy this. Spent about $3,000 for carpet and paint right away just to get it livable so we could move in. I rented out all the rooms and I made around $400 a month. I rehabbed it over about two years with the cash flow from the property and sold it for $327,000 in May of 2018. I got lucky too. There was a hailstorm while we lived there and I was able to get the siding replaced. The roof was in good shape, so didn't have to worry about that. This was my first house hack in Austin. It was a single family with an ADU in the back. That's an accessory dwelling unit. So the front house was a three bed, one bath. The back house was a one bed, one bath. This place was disgusting. I bought it for 260,000, ended up having to put about 65,000 into it for rehab, more than I had assumed. So good lesson, find a good contractor before you get in it because this ended up being a lot more. Um, but it ended up making about 3,200 a month in gross rent. I sold it in 2020 for 430,000. Again, it was in terrible shape. It needed siding, windows, roof, full interior rehab. So kitchens, bathrooms, lights, flooring, paint, literally everything. But it turned out really well for me. It got me comfortable with big rehabs too. So this leads me to my next one, which is a duplex in East Austin that I currently live in. This has three bed, one bath units. They're around a thousand square feet. They're 987 square feet each. Again, this needed a full interior remodel and some exterior work. You can't see it from this picture, but the roof is actually in great condition. This is before it was rehabbed. Um, it needed all new windows. It needed all new siding. And again, full interior remodel kitchens bathrooms, all the sockets and switches, all the paint, all the flooring, literally everything, light fixtures in the place. The list price was 345,000. I ended up paying 341,000. We're estimating the gross rents at around 3,800 after rehab. We might be able to push them up to four grand total. And we are right in the middle of rehabbing the front unit here right now should be done in a few weeks and we already have a lot of interest at, at two grand. So I'm hoping we can get 4,000 gross rent for this thing. That'd be awesome. The rehab budget is roughly 65,000 to do all this too. But you know, on the first house hack there, I didn't have any money to do this type of stuff. I had to borrow that $3,000 to do carpet and paint in the place before we moved in. And I paid for the rehab all with the cash flow from the place. On my second house hack, I paid for a lot of this on credit cards and just paid it off as quickly as I could. Um, do this over time for a long period of time and it works out really well. All right, thanks guys. Reach out to me if you have any questions. I would always love to help. Here to help, thanks guys.